What makes a strong person, you may ask? Well, in my opinion, it's someone who can overcome obstacles and keep their head up even when it seems impossible. When they show love with no intention in receiving it and caring for people every chance that they get. We grew up in the country, of course, very poor. Um, there was 14 of us total, only 12 lived, you know, to be raised up. Two died, one at six months, one at birth. And of course, Betty was the oldest. We didn't grow up together. She was gone when I was growing up, but I always spent time with them in the summertime, um, every summer. And then I went to live with them after I graduated so that I could work up there because there was nothing down where we lived. So it was just helping in those ways. We used to, after I moved back here and we would come back, Opal and Sharon and I would visit her and we had a lot of fun. We would go out to lunch, laugh a lot. You know, it was just several things until she got really bad, but we had fun at those times. I was one of three girls. I was the middle child. And so that made five of us in our family. And uh, although it didn't seem like five because we always had some relative living with us. <laughs> My mom was probably one of the sweetest people you'd ever meet. She taught us how to tell the truth and how to be kind and um, the importance of loving each other. She was a very good mom. She worked a 40 hour week and still came home and put dinner on the table. So she was a good example for us. When I first met Betty, uh, first thing I noticed was of course she was short of stature, but not uh, necessarily of character. She seemed very kind, polite, respective, and uh, somebody you would want to know better. So throughout uh, our growing up years, her siblings were growing up as well, and they were coming into town. They lived in a, in a country, in the country, and they moved in town one by one with my mom and my dad and got jobs and went to school and. Uh, got degrees and everything while mom and dad helped them uh, financially in, in not having to pay rent or anything. So there was always someone in the house, um, um, a, a relative to live with us while they were able to get their act together. <laughs> we did many activities. We picked vegetables, fruits in her garden, made pies together dumplings, um, we played dominoes, 
um, all kinds of activities that we did together. She was an example of get up every day and do what you gotta do and, you know, I mean, she was kind, you know, she, she taught you to be kind and she was fair. And, um... I don't remember a time growing up ever that we weren't in church, not ever. I mean, I've seen pictures of myself and my kid, my sisters dressed up and going to church when we were babies, and we, and we just always have gone to church. They have always, always made Jesus a priority in our lives. And um, we went to all the church services, we went to dinners and luncheons and all kind of programs the church had. So therefore, we all were connected with a, uh, a good group of kids to hang out with. She was a, a churchgoer. Now, not all churchgoers are Christian, but she was a Christian. Um, you could see that by her devotion to God. Uh, she never had a meal without praying uh, beforehand. She and her husband were uh, tithing to her church until it hurt. Um, and she, you know, although this, uh, you know, she never smoked, she never drank, uh, she never said a bad cuss word. And although that's not necessarily like, uh, you can be a Christian and still do that. I, I mean, that was just, she lived uh, the, uh, the biblical way. Uh, while, while her husband was alive, they had uh, daily devotionals every day. They read from the Bible, so um, she was just very reverent, and uh, you could tell that uh, that was in her heart. Church was a big thing when we were kids. We, we, we were always in church together every Sunday with mom and dad. We spent a lot of time together when I was younger. I would stay the night with them on the weekends. Um, we would go to church together. We would go to the parks together. Um, we would just hang out and watch TV and play, play games together all the time. My mom and dad were married for almost 51 years. And uh, so they had been very, very close. Um, when my father passed away, it was quite a jolt for all of us. It, uh, it changed everything because my mother, who was used to my dad doing everything as far as around the house and so forth and so on, was not there to do it anymore. And of course, he wasn't there to help us girls and struggles that we had. Um, but she leaned on the Lord and, and got through it and came out ahead. <laughs> because she was able to do a lot of things that she couldn't do when my dad was ill. And uh, so she made up for lost time, made a lot of friends and did a lot of activities um, after my father passed away. So it kept her busy. My mother had an illness that is so overwhelmingly popular today, which we need to we need to get taken care of, a uh, cure for. She had Alzheimer's, and the, poor, the part of all Alzheimer's she had was dementia. And uh, she couldn't remember things and couldn't remember uh, 
what day it was or where she had to go or what pills to take or anything else. So we, um, we helped her with that for, for probably uh, three, four years in her condo. And then we had her, um, had her move to a, like a, an assisted living type. So I went to visit her every single night and my husband went every single night. My kids, my grandkids, everybody went to visit. And uh, my younger sister had come in from, um, I believe it was Cincinnati, where she lived. And she got there a few hours before, actually, before my mother passed away. I was devastated. I was sad that I lost my best friend. Um, it was probably the hardest thing I've ever been through. Well, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a horrible feeling. It's something that never goes away. Um, I actually saw her the night before she died. So uh, my husband and my sister were there, and the nurse came in and said, you know, she's going to be okay overnight if you guys want to go home. And I said, no, I think I'll stay. So they left, and uh, probably an hour or so later, I got situated in a chair next to her, and uh, something just said to me, get up, get up, get up. And I went over and I checked on my mother and she was gone. So I remember screaming and, and calling the nurse and, you know, I don't think my, I think my mother's gone and she came in and she absolutely was gone. And uh, so my sister and my husband came back to the hospital and we all got to hold her and tell her goodbye. And, uh, She's lived in our hearts ever since. My favorite memory that I have with my mom is very, very personal. I mean, I have many. But this is the one that stood out when I was asked this question. I was ex expecting to have, first of all, my daughter was pregnant and I was expecting to have my first grandchild. And um, so when the time came, of course my daughter, they were in the hospital and, and I went to the hospital and uh, we were waiting and waiting for the baby to come. And actually, she kind of wanted to be just she and I and my mom for the delivery of this baby. She said, I'd just feel better if you guys were here. So everybody else went out, except obviously the doctors and the nurse, but, um, and it wasn't too awfully long until our grandson was born, our first grandchild, our first grandson. And my mom and I and, and my daughter and my grandson, four generations in the hospital. It was a very, very joyous time. Great memories. And she said of all the kids that, that, that they had in her family and me having kids and, and my sisters having kids, and she had never seen a baby actually born. So she even wrote that down as one of her top memories. When I was little, me and my grandma buddy always used to watch WWE. 
<laughs> it's kind of funny because you wouldn't think that somebody like your grandma or grandpa would want to watch something like that, but we did. We always ate our tomatoes and always just had a fun time. Mama Buddy and I would go to the cemetery and clean off the grave, and we would do that a lot. And now, I have to clean off her grave. I miss her a lot, but I know that she's always in our hearts. Until next time, I'm all buddy.